Hey, what's up, everybody? Star Wars, the original sequel trilogy by Timothy Zahn. Okay, first, I want to say that I will be talking spoilers briefly in this video toward the end. I had this idea a while back, and I think I'll try it out for this video. So that you will always know when I'm talking spoilers, I will put this red light on anytime that we're in spoiler territory. That way, if you're skipping around the video or whatever, you will know without even having to risk hearing something that you didn't want to hear. This trilogy is also known as the Thrawn Trilogy, Thrawn being the main protagonist. The first book is Heir to the Empire and came out in 1991, well before the Disney sequels, and the prequels for that matter. This is widely considered to be the true sequels to the original trilogy by many fans, rather than the Disney movies, which came out more recently. The Thrawn trilogy was already received incredibly well when the books were released, but now, because of the rift in the Star Wars fandom caused by the many questionable directional choices made for the Disney sequels, the Thrawn trilogy enjoys an especially elevated status just by comparison. I can't say anything about the Disney sequels because I haven't seen them, and going off of the breakdowns and reviews I've seen, I have no interest in doing so. But I've heard they're quite a mess. So then, anyway, Heir to the Empire picks up five years after the death of the Empire, or the Emperor, and Darth Vader in Return of the Jedi. Han Solo and Leia are married and pregnant with twins. Luke has been wanting to start Leia's Jedi training, but she's been too busy with her position in the new government. And a Chiss alien named Grand Admiral Thrawn has taken possession of the remains of the Empire and is looking to acquire a new fleet and destroy the Rebellion. Grand Admiral Thrawn has been called an evil Sherlock Holmes. That's kind of his thing. He's incredibly intelligent and very gifted in deduction and inference. He's able to predict people's behaviors and actions going off of little information. He can study the art of a culture and use individuals' preferences in art to understand their motivations and work out what their intentions are. Grand Admiral Thrawn is the main draw for this trilogy, but there's also Joris Sabayoth. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but it's kind of an unwritten rule in sci-fi that half of your story's characters have to have bizarre and ambiguous pronunciations. So Sabayoth is a a dark clone of a Jedi Master. He's incredibly powerful, and he and Thrawn form an alliance. Sabayoth's ambition is to obtain Luke and Leia with her twins and turn them into his servants so that he can become more powerful. Thrawn just wants to defeat the Rebellion and control the, the galaxy. The story introduces many ideas, characters, and locations which have since become well-known in the Star Wars fandom. Heir to the Empire contains the first mention of Mara Jade, Talon Card, and we get, to see, we get to see Coruscant, the galactic capital, and Kashyyyk, Chewbacca's homeworld. Again, this was before the prequel movies came out. We also go back to Dagobah for a little bit. Most interesting to me was this new world, Merkur, which is where much of the story takes place. Merkur is an extremely hostile forest world, which is home to Talon Card and Mara Jade. The author gives us some very well-written description and encounters with the wildlife in this planet, including the Vornskers, a vicious canine-like beast, and the Islamari, which are fuzzy lizard-like snakes with legs that live in the trees of the forest of Merkur. The Islamari are the only creatures known with the ability to emit a field inside of which the force cannot be used. This idea is used to support much of the plot in this trilogy. All the stuff on the planet Mercur was very much a joy to read. The author does such a good job of putting you in this dangerous forest environment, and I found those sections to be some of the most enjoyable. And Luke, this is where Luke starts to get to know Mara Jade a little bit, and the reader as well. I'm not too interested in uh, the space battles, but there was a lot of really good space battle stuff in these books too. 
And I just finished Leviathan Wakes, the first book in the Expanse series, a few days ago, and I felt that Heir to the Empire gives you much better space content than that book did. You know, when I, before I read these, I kind of had this fear that it was going to feel like reading fan fiction, but the quality of it was so good that it absolutely did not feel like that, even for a second. I don't want to say too much about the story, but I was surprised at how good it was, and I see why it's beloved by so many. I'd also like to say that one of the reasons I don't read too much fiction is because usually it's very clear that I'm consuming a product of some artist's imagination, which was contrived to convey an entertaining experience. This feeling can be hard to ignore unless you're reading something very good and very submersive. I never got that feeling while reading these, which for being a sequel is, uh, to a well-known movie, it's got to be pretty difficult to pull off. This very much felt like reading movie novelizations, and I really enjoyed them. It's also worth pointing out that the author captured the personality in each of the characters perfectly. Uh, you can tell Timothy Zahn took care to bring out each of the characters, and the new characters are excellent too, especially Grand Admiral Thrawn, or as I call him, Grand Granddad Thrawn. There was one character that spent the entire first novel pissed off and hostile. I understand that this is an important phase in the character arc and in their development, but man, it was such a drag reading through this insufferable character's parts. Her arc does pay off nicely though. And this story ties up the loose ends and in a very satisfying way. And the final confrontation was pretty amazing. Some of the ideas the author used for the ending of The Last Command were so cool to read about and I really loved it. The story was memorable and interesting. The locations were masterfully painted for the reader. I thought that was something the author did exceptionally well. The pacing was very good throughout the entire trilogy too. This is what many fans refer to as the true sequel to the original, but it does seem that every story requires a certain level of willingness not to ask certain kinds of questions, and this story is no exception. A common occurrence in Star Wars is there are many events, and events which just so happen to work out perfectly convenient, like a lot of other stories. For example, Luke lands on a planet, and it just so happens that out of the entire planet, he landed in the location that would be significant to the plot. This kind of thing, I don't think the writer should be expecting to get away with so much. Is it the Force? I don't know. One more complaint with Star Wars. Uh, you're always hearing of a desert planet, a forest planet, or an ice planet. Why does each planet in Star Wars only have one kind of ecosystem? Is this even geographically possible? I don't know much about the finer points of orbital mechanics, but maybe Earth's diversity is just a cosmological anomaly. Just a couple of nitpicks, certainly nothing to get in the way of enjoying the story from a certain point of view. So it's time to talk about some spoilers for just a second because what the author did was so cool, I just have to talk about it. For the final confrontation in the first novel, uh, Luke and the gang is facing... Sabaoth in a cloning facility that was being used to grow so, uh, soldiers for Thrawn's new fleet of ships. And it turns out that Sabaoth has a clone of Luke that was grown from the hand that he lost in his duel with Vader on Bespin. Sorry, that's not the from the first novel, that's on the third novel, not the first. But not only that, but the clone is equipped with Luke's lightsaber that he lost in that duel. The story was already amazing up to that point, but Luke Skywalker fighting a Luke Skywalker clone. I thought that was pretty incredible. Um, that's the coolest thing I've heard in a long time. Uh, one thing, though, I don't know how I feel about this, but the reason the final book is called The Last Command, it's, it's a reference to when Emperor Palpatine was dying, he sent Mara Jade the command to kill Luke. And through the trilogy, Mara is tortured by the voice of the Empire saying, you will kill Luke Skywalker. Well, in the end, she is freed from this torture by killing the clone of Luke. It's very epic, but to me it sounded very dark side, like the solution to free your mind from the evil emperor 
is to follow his command to murder Luke and then everything is better after that? How much more dark side can you get than that? I don't know if this issue is ever addressed in later novels, but man, to me, that was crazy. A big part of the lore in these novels is just how good Luke is and how the Jedi always find ways to make things right with minimal harm. But anyway, in the end, everything is okay, and Luke gives Mara his old lightsaber. One more thing I want to mention is the parts that deal with Leia giving birth and her and Han as parents were so cool to read. I I wouldn't think I'd care about something like that, but with the way it was written, I really enjoyed that. If you like Star Wars and you haven't read this yet, you absolutely should. Before I started reading these, I thought that it wouldn't really be as good as some of the other sci-fi novels from well-known authors, but I was surprised how good they were. These books were just as good as most of the other stuff I've read, and better than much of it. I enjoyed this trilogy so much that I ordered the Dark Plagueis novel, which I really loved, and I also picked up Vector Prime, which should be pretty amazing too. And now I find myself looking down that expanded universe rabbit hole. Really, I probably won't bother with much more than that, unless I'm just blown away by Vector Prime, because my TBR is already out of control, and you guys know I prefer nonfiction over fiction too. For most of this trilogy, I listened to the audiobook read by Mark Thompson, and it blew me away. Normally, I can't stand when people try to imitate other people's voices, because I never think it sounds like them. But this was such a good production. All of the voices were shockingly good. Except, they didn't really get Leia right. Um, she always sounded so soft and timid, which is not like her character from the movies. Other than that, I still can't believe how good of a job they did. The audiobook has musical cues and sound effects. It was really incredible. I really recommend consuming this product that way. I can't overstress how good the production of these audiobooks is. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. And if you like Star Wars, whether it's the original trilogy, the prequels, or the Disney sequels, you should love this. So go check out Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and Last Command by Timothy Zahn.